dating is broken. That is the real life felt observation that returning guest, Dr. Kate Rains Goldie, is fixing with her very clever combination of play and Lego, love go, to help those in the dating scene find a deeper and more meaningful relationship quicker and in a way that is more transparent to the deeper aspects of ourselves. Whether through the inherent online behaviors, the design of dating apps, overly strategic thinking, or just because we're not entirely sure what we want in a relationship, these are some of the factors that Kate has observed is behind the assertion that dating is broken. In this discussion, Kate shares her real life journey into discovering Love Go and the mix of bringing play and Lego and dating together. We then also broaden out the discussion to focus on the general state of human connection and some of the barriers behind that. This discussion with Kate, as it was last time, is a lot of fun and very playful. And we go deep into the world of human connection, which I think is really required at this moment. Now there's another thing to this discussion. Kate is, Kate is launching Love Go right now. And for any badass professional lady who is time poor and wants some help out in the dating world, she's offering the opportunity free in the next 90 days to guide you on the use of Love Go to assist you in a better place in your dating. So whether you're in it for the discussion about dating, whether you're in it for the discussion about human connection, or whether you're in it because you are a badass professional lady, you're going to love this discussion with Kate. So enjoy Kate. Hello and welcome back to WA Real. I'm your host, Bryn Edwards. Today I have the great pleasure of welcoming back Dr. Kate Rains Goldie. Kate, how are you? I'm very excited to be here and talk to you about this. <laughs> that is great. It's always better when guests are excited yep. to be here rather than nervous, because some do start off a little bit, nervous. A little bit nervous, because this is exciting stuff that I've been working on for a really long time. I know, and that's about. why we're going to talk today. <laughs> yeah. So um, last time we spoke was quite a while ago. You yeah. were, uh, it was episode 53, yep. so some 130 odd episodes ago. Um, and we really talked about um, playing and, and playfulness mm. and learning and unlocking potential, particularly in the individual and in the business setting. Mm. What have you been up to recently? <laughs> well, it's like... And what? actually, just before we start that, yeah. before I ask you what you've been up to recently, um, for those who didn't watch that podcast previously, how would you describe <laughs> what you do? What I did then or what I do now? What you do now? What do I do now? Well, I'd still describe myself as a as sort of an advocate for play and yes. curiosity. So curiosity is a big word for me and play is an enabler of that. Um, but what I would describe myself now is I'm still doing that work, but I've added a kind of new arm and that's mm. this new thing that I was kind of unexpected and came out of COVID sort of, I think, yeah. opening up what we allow ourselves to do. And what other people maybe are, like people, I think people are more open with their expectations of people doing something different now. So right. We have yes. this permission. So it's very similar, but it's a different application. And so I am the CEO of LoveGo, which is using play and Lego as a tool for badass professional women to, to go on better dates and find love and level up. And so I would describe myself as... So badass women. Badass professional women, yeah. Badass. Badass, yeah. What do you mean by badass? <laughs> and it's sort of the... the I guess so obviously not got a gut problem. It's a good question because it's the more North American um, definition, which is kind of like um, strong and fighting for justice and doing the right thing and just not giving a fuck what people think. Right, SJW type stuff. Single, social justice warrior? Warriors, yeah. I mean that's that's a, that's a that's a loaded term, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't describe them as that. I was just telling you <laughs> for a bit of fun. A little, a little big. <laughs> no, it's kind of like you know, um, like Betty White just described herself as a, a badass bitch. Um, right. On um, Twitter for. Um, I think that she had a, a, a an African American performer on her show when yeah. that was like many years ago when that was seen as not acceptable and right. um, 
she got a lot of flack and then did it again and then her show got canceled and then she said mm. well yeah i'm just i was just a badass bitch and so it's that kind of thing where it's like this feels right to me and i'm gonna stick to my guns and i'm gonna um mm. yeah so it's just people it's like strong women i guess is a good way to describe strong, it strong yeah strong women. it's interesting that we should have to use the word like badass <laughs> and, and and bitch and strong well i don't like the word bitch but i'm just qu- I'm quoting betty, yeah. betty white on that but um because it strikes me that there's you know um you could be a sexual on this and there are so many people who um i've talked about this frequently on the podcast um that their their moral compass and moral philosophy is scrambled Hmm. uh, as is their connection with their priorities and values and beliefs in life and so they're just like sailing along in this lovely codependent way of letting other people and other things choose who and what they are and there is that you know as we as we interact and collide with life that's how we start to find out our own values and then you get to this line in the sand part where it's like i need a bit of courage now because mm. i'm going to stand up for this because mm. i don't like that and this is me and boundaries mm. so yeah mm. i guess i look at it more mechanically <laughs> than metaphorically <laughs> It's it's a term that seems to resonate with with the woman hey. that I want to work with, and it resonates with me. So I think that's. But I, I'm. If it gets the point across, it's yeah, simply. In it might one be word. a different word for different people. It might evolve, yeah. but it, okay. it's a particular kind of. Um, and it, I think it's similar to kind of the people who listen to your podcast, which includes me. But people who are willing to invest in themselves and and be, um, you know, are interested in personal growth and you know being explorers of the human mm. experience and you know want something more out of life and want to kind of leave the world better than when they found it yes yeah and so absolutely it's, maybe there's a different term for that but that seems to kind of Fair be the enough. closest i can find so there far there you go i thought it's an i thought it was a point worth exploring <laughs> that's very very brin for you to ask about that i love it <laughs> indeed very brin so um so love go yep obviously there's a love and there's lego yeah put together Ex- expand more for me. okay so it's a method that um there's a lot to it um but it uses lego as a tool because I'll, it's really like i mean i almost have to talk about the story of how it happened we'll do that the journey, that was, that's the journey one of the questions of that was coming yeah. way. um i mean the outcome of it is is that it's it dating is 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 i would argue it's broken Right. And it there's this huge divide between men and women right now. And yeah. apps of just it's just this minefield where and that's, you know, actually connects back to my old, some of my older work around social media and how we're all being monetized as eyeballs. Yeah. Um, so it's like the dating apps, they want to kind of satisfy you enough that you think that it's working enough to be on it, but they don't want you to leave because then you're off the book. Yeah, right. So so it's kind of they want to keep you hooked, but not... So it's the same kind of, you know, social yeah. media thing. Yeah. So, um, but that's how that's how we date now. And so how do we... What What is through apps? Yeah, people, that's like the way that people find dates. Well, I, was, um, <laughs> I was shocked recently whilst watching TV one night to see an, e, an e-harmony ad. Yep. And in that e-harmony ad, right... <laughs> Uh, there were two people either sides of computers and there was this whole theme of you know someone will help you to try something new and this guy was trying a different flavored pizza but the underlying thing was that they were doing it through like facetime zoom or something like that and i was just like oh my god you've gone from you've gone from one layer of removing the natural selection and putting yourself out there part of the process of finding someone new in your life Mm. and now you've even gone to the next level of you know, you don't even have to hang out in person once you're in that place either. Yeah. Yeah. And I, okay, I get it. It's it's like COVID relevant. Yeah. But at COVID the same relevant. COVID relevant. <laughs> yeah. You know, for the purposes of sales and marketing, yeah. which at the end of the day is what it is. Yeah. You know, um, because you know all these tools and things that are out there to you know solve a problem, mm. which more often than not doesn't always exist Mm. but um yeah it just struck me as really weird Mm. so you know the fact that you brought up the apps Mm. is is really interesting Mm. and i recall you know many 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 moons ago when at the age of early 40s 
I was thrust back into the, the world of dating and some of the ladies in the office I was working at, at the time said, it's time for you to get yourself out there, Brian. And I, I said, so, okay, so how do I do it? And I thought they were going to give me some real life advice <laughs> yeah. on how if I saw an attractive lady in the coffee shop, I could just walk up and strike up a conversation. And their advice was like, right, well, we're going to get you on, on this app and this app. Yep. And, and I said, like, that's rubbish. Yeah. And they said, well, you know, I explained. I thought you were going to give me this sort of advice. And they're like, oh, no, that's a bit confronting. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's yeah. So I, your own I've, journey with this. Yeah, I found myself single. And so when I was. Find yourself single. <laughs> in a time when dating apps had become the way. Because I yeah. remember when, I think, online dating kind of became sort of a thing in like maybe 2000 and it was totally different back then and it was actually a way to find really interesting people mm. and now it's completely changed and so it's coming really back to that and going well what has happened in this time that I haven't been single that is it just I noticed this huge difference yeah. and so it was this well how do I how do I fix dating for myself because mm. this app thing is I just feel really disconnected yeah. and that you know that work my work with with playfulness and and games is all about connecting people and, and yeah. um, bringing people together in the physical world. And so that was, you know, how do we, how do we address this? And um, yeah, dating is broken. I think there's a number of reasons, but I think that kind of algorithmic mm. way that we now connect with each other or not connect with each other is everywhere in all aspects of life, including dating. Yeah. And so how this came about was I did my... Um, Lego Serious Play certification, which is a tool that was developed by Lego as like a corporate tool for innovation mm. and team building and creativity, and it's used by massive brands um, worldwide. But um, and the, what does that entail? And so the, the power it's fun putting serious and play in the same. Stuff. Yeah, and yeah, because what it is is that we still have this negative connotation of play that it's a waste of time, but it's this yeah. incredibly powerful tool um, for. Like it's this idea that I like to call the magic circle, yes. which is you you enter this magic circle and things when you're playing when you're when you're playing games or just playing more broadly because um, mm. you can play without it being a game you can just yeah. be playful, um, which is what I'd argue Love Go is using mm. Lego. But the idea is that you're in this circle and it allows you to be more vulnerable, to feel safe, to explore more. It opens up all of these things that allow it, better connections between Is people. it more or less guarded than, than being vulnerable? And I know the two may seem like I've just picked the opposite end. Yeah. But it's, to me, being less guarded um, means that all the defenses and things that would nor you'd normally have to get through are yeah. just like petered away somewhat. Whereas vulnerable is, I, I don't know. You still be authentic and less guarded versus vulnerable. I don't know. It's worth it again. Seems, it's semantics, but yeah. I mean, it's the results that I that that I got from using it, and then I that uh, <clears throat> that the people who have um, been kind of testing it with me and working with me, mm. it, it seems to just really get it gets to when so when you there's a whole bunch of of components to it, but when you bring so what we have in front of us for people listening on the podcast is a little kit of of Lego. Yeah. And the point with Lego serious play is that you're using Lego as a tool for metaphor and story. You're not building like literal houses and cars and buildings. Yeah. You're um, building almost like dreamscapes that connect with yeah. the unconscious. And so it almost like it unlocks the thinking in yourself yeah. and unlocks the thinking in the other person. And it's surprising. And it bypasses a lot of the like jadedness and yeah. I think cynicism that we have where we're just like over dating or over... Um, yeah, we're cynical, I think. And so we have all these... Where do you think that cynicism comes from? Um, probably dating apps. <laughs> mm. So I think it's people who, who are... Because a lot of women I also spoke to, and men as well, they'll go be on the dating apps. And, um, well, I would say to them, how, how, you know, if dating is broken, how do you solve this problem? And they would say, I would delete the app. And so it's just like, it's like I'm so tired of... I'd rather yeah. just not even engage with it at all. And that doesn't really solve the problem. But I think it's just you're so tired of these inauthentic connections yes. and just this, I think, algorithmic dating, to coin maybe a term for that, is um, it, it makes it turn, it, when you're just constantly swiping and it's not really based on knowing something more deeply, it's very superficial and mm. then you just go on these dates and you're kind of set. It just, it's just the whole almost 
way that it's been set up that I think after you've gone on enough of these bad dates or had these expectations created or just had this have someone turned up that doesn't quite look like the picture that they yeah. put on yeah and then and then I think it starts to be a self-fulfilling prophecy when you've done it so much that you just have your guard up that it starts to create that mm. disconnection because mm. I remember a moment when I had brought this on a date and it was someone I realized um, it wasn't for me but what I was starting to have an intention was to actually and this is what I want to intend and bring into the world with with this bring it out for 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 women um, is to actually leave um, the date better than to be to leave learning something about myself and the date having, having learned something about them and maybe learning something about each other yeah and so um, I I realized that I had kind of closed off because I was you know just kind of feel like okay maybe, maybe maybe I was being too judgmental but I was starting to feel that kind of like I'm over this yeah. and so when we started playing w with this Lego kit together um, I could feel that actually there was that human connection and maybe maybe yeah. it wasn't for me but I actually felt like I learned something about myself and we learned something about each other and it, yeah. I could feel myself opening up again and having that human connection and there was another guy I went on a date with who actually um, we're still friends even though it didn't work out but um, said to me that he actually learned something a lot about himself after doing it and where he was at in the dating process and maybe why he wasn't ready. Yeah. And so it's kind of like the purpose of it is to, is to help people find love and connect with each other, to help women. Yeah. But also like that on a broader thing, that's my hope more broadly is to actually start to, to shift back <laughs> away from what's been happening with social media and, yeah. and algorithmic everything. Well, we've got, as I was listening to you talk, um, there are a number of things, again, themes that I've explored here on the podcast that come up. You know, anything, anything that has that social media design behind it has that relative positioning um, where, you know, how do I compare to someone else? How do I compare to me yesterday or me yeah. tomorrow? You know, there's this constant comparison, which then is a breeding ground for the mechanics of narcissism. Um, not out, out and out narcissism, as in I have a problem with um, boundaries type stuff. But there's the the mechanics of it, and let's not let's dial back to the original myth, which is, you know, narcissus fell in love with the reflection yep. of himself so much so that he died. Yeah. Right, and so everything to do with social media is really a portrayal of, of, of a reflection of me. You know, you could go on my Instagram account and think, oh, all Bryn does is have a happy time watching sunsets lying in the sea, <laughs> because that's what I post. Um, or, or highly sardonic memes and stuff. <laughs> but um, but that, you know, that's just one small slither of the day. Mm. Um, and, and so, yeah, we, we've got that, we, we're trained into that. So as soon as you're picking your phone up and you're doing something, you're in that, you're in that world, mm -hmm. those behaviors are there. So now it's portraying something that, that is not authentic, mm -hmm. is you're not exactly portraying your inner indigenous, mm -hmm. right? But then there's, a, there's another aspect to it as well, which I find at the moment, and there's something I'm toying with, is the difference between that sort of metaphoric mythical thinking and way of sense making versus the you know the rational strategic outcome focused hypothesis driven thinking as well and, and i'm not going to say one is better than the other mm -hmm. they are just they are mm -hmm. and they are us and so if you know if you are and this this is going to be sound really harsh but you know if you are you know trucking your way into your mid latter thirties and you're suddenly realizing, oh, I haven't quite got myself married or got the family yet. Yeah. And, and time is ticking for men and women. Yeah. Okay. Um, then all of a sudden those, those strategic goals in your life start to come up. And when we become goal orientated, mm. then we are less playful and open to opportunity mm. and possibility and probability mm. and, and, and things like that. So I could see how 
it's a recipe ground for getting really fucking neurotic. Yeah. Um, given all of those competing things. And then you've got the other layer of just yep. the whole rest of the world that says you should be doing this by then yep. and you know, your body image should be like that yep. and you should have a partner like that and there's just endless amounts of crap going on. And so, you know, it's, it's little wonder that people are struggling with it. And, and again, set against the backdrop of, and, and, and it seems to be the white elephant in the room, we don't connect. Mm. We, we, we don't connect mm. properly. You know, I, I'm probably at the other end of it because of this and what I do. Mm. Um, and this is nourishing to me. If I don't do a podcast a week, it's like I've, I've skipped a meal of a day yep. during that week. And, and, it, and again, it doesn't always have to be strategic. It's not always about, oh, well, I'm going to go out and be social because I'm looking for a partner. Mm. You know, there's, I think I've shared with you the great story of when I put myself out there to just have conversations with mm. strangers. Um, and it wasn't to pick up chicks, mm. even though I took um, a bit of advice from someone who was a pickup artist, mm. um, a friend of mine over in Sydney. But I just went out to talk to people. And then I started making friends. And, I, and, and the friends were even more valuable mm. than, you know, trying to have a relationship. And then, you know, the amazing relationship came. Mm. But then, but the making friends still continues. Mm. And, you know, you go, you know, I think there's been numerous studies on this and what's the one key thing of a long and healthy life? It's got nothing to do with going to the gym, it's got nothing to do with what you eat, it's mm. got everything to do with the connections you've got. Mm. Not just your partner, but your friends and everyone mm. who's around you. Mm. So there we go. I think that that really, that idea of doing it not for the sake of finding love so it's almost like this is finding love by not looking for love yeah because but even that then becomes a, <laughs> that becomes a sneaky mind game yeah of tricking yourself because but, you really but, want but that's where the play comes in yes because the play the magic circle is what enables it yeah because it, it's like okay mm. well i'm okay with just being on this date and being because mm. it brings you back to the present it does all of these kind of like mindfulness things of like i'm engaged but i'm not attached to mm. outcomes I'm being present. I'm having fun. I'm connecting with someone, even if it, even if it doesn't work out. Yeah, it, it's I've left the world a better place. I've yeah. left myself a better place. I've left that, and I've had a giggle. Yeah, I've had a giggle while I'm doing it. You know, you can, we can rationalise it all these ways, but you know, <laughs> it's been time well spent because I connected and I had a yeah. laugh. That's it. And even if it doesn't work out, the guy still is like, oh yeah, is is doesn't feel like oh that was horrible. They're yeah. like, oh I learned you, something about myself you, too. Yeah, <laughs> and you could have made a friend. Yeah. As well, yeah. Along the way, so at some point you must have had to front up and thought, "I'm going to take some Lego." Yes, oh, I should probably on I just date. To tell the story. Yeah, go on. I okay, think I so, it. no, no, no. I mean, I think it's it's because there's just yeah, it's so it's so that's why I was excited to be on this podcast to talk about the things that I probably don't usually will get to yeah. talk about with this, um, because there's a lot of layers to it. But the story for me was that, um, yeah, I kind of had this. I was realizing that I was um, attracting toxic relationships that weren't serving me. Right. And I had this really good friend in Sydney who is a badass lady, former CFO of like one of the biggest successful startups. Yeah. And so she put me onto this lady named Rory Ray, who is um, my kind of dating guru because she takes a really different approach, which is... Mm. Um, changing your own energy and changing how you're reacting and changing your communication style and being open to what happens. And there's a lot of playfulness in her, her Seems method. Perfectly logical. <laughs> but also this idea of um, what she calls circular dating. So the idea mm. of that you go on all of these dates and it's, it's a process of going on a lot of first dates to learn about yourself and kind of reset why maybe you're so it's like almost, she calls it dating as therapy. Mm. And so I kind of looked at this at the beginning and I think I wouldn't have taken it seriously if, except if my friend hadn't showed it to me because it was just very feminine and flowery and it was just really not um, for like, you know, badass business ladies who me, me and my friend, friend Kate were, her name's Kate as well. Mm. Um, and it was only because she kind of recommended it. So I kind of started this like almost similar to your Project Connect where I was... I'm going to resolve this. I'm going to figure out 
why I'm doing this and work on it, working on myself. So it's a big personal growth mm. thing. But then it was also, I want to be in a nurturing partnership by the time that I'm 40. So I know that there's, um, you know, those expectations around, especially for women, about being married and all of these different things. Which we just discussed. Yeah, and yeah. it's there's a great podcast called The Single Serving Podcast, which is all about how it's really hard to be a single woman. And it's I, I love it because it's... Um, very much about kind of re retelling that story but so not to say that that's what you should want but i just kind of i'm big on intentions and having you know yep. setting a goal for myself and saying okay i want to have this sorted i want to have a happy partnership that's a conscious relationship and i want to have this by by the time that i'm 40. yeah and so i started this this project using the rory ray method of circular dating of going on all of these dates and almost like the idea is that it's therapy it's resetting who you're attracting and learning about yourself and why am I getting triggered by this? So it's really almost about you rather than the guy. Yeah, yeah. But the way that you're meant to do this is to use the dating apps. Um, the, I think Rory kind of developed her stuff before the dating apps became a thing. Yeah. Um, so you go on these dates and I just started to become really jaded by it. <laughs> so I had to kind yeah. of hack it in a way. And because I'd done my Lego Serious Play training, which was using like yeah. as a tool for in the business world helping people to understand each other and communicate better i had a bag of lego with me that i was using to to show my corporate clients and i had it on a date and i thought well what if i just okay, use yeah. this <laughs> you know it seems to work well and it would kind of accelerate mm. um friendships and connections Must with my clients move. well i it, for me it was like this is kind of fun like yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't You're it was your element <laughs> yeah it's like okay i'm gonna like experiment it's the Aquarius, my Aquariusness, right? It's like, yes. Let's do something weird and new and experimental. Um, and so I started using it on dates and it actually was amazing because it would help me to get past that kind of jadedness I was starting to have. Because there's a lot of nonsense on those dating apps. Yes. Um, Men holding fish. Yeah. And just like <laughs> inappropriate Here messages. You wake up in the morning and there's just like like walls of text about like inappropriate things some guy you've never talked to wants to do to you just like just just a whole bunch of nonsense that you it's hard Ooh, to not <laughs> any young fella <laughs> pop it in the holster <laughs> it's just yeah it's just like it's it's kind of i think easy to become jaded so yeah started bringing this and started finding that it was actually really helping me to have better connections with with the guys they would have a better date it just mm. knows how i found the the really awesome guy that I'm dating now, yeah. who was kind of the, what I had imagined when I had set the intention for 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 what I wanted. And I just turned 40 yesterday, so, there you go. <laughs> so it, it ticket works. But the other thing that I did with the Lego was that I started using it as a tool, almost like a vision board right. for me to go, well, what is it actually that I want in a relationship? Because a lot of the women that I spoke to aren't exactly clear on what it is that they actually want. Mm. So using it as a, a vision board to imagine that. And the power of it is that it helps com to create communication between you and other people. Yeah. But it also helps you to unlock your own thinking. And, and it's very, very powerful. But because it's playful, it doesn't feel hard or scary. Yes. It just makes it fun. And so you're doing this really heavy work, but you're doing it in a way that actually feels good. And mm. that's why I think it also works on a date because you could sit down and be like, okay, um, do we have, you know, do you want kids? Yeah. Do you... Yeah, um, you can do the checklist. Yeah, right. And it turns into an interview and it's unromantic. It's <laughs> it's just like, you know, it just feels desperate. The energy's all wrong. It doesn't, it's not yeah. creating, it's well, disconnecting. We're back, we're back to that serious strategic... Yeah, like, I need to get married goals, by the time I'm 40. <laughs> orientated, you know. Yeah. Oh, I picked, I ended up with this lady. Why is that? Because she ticked like nine out of the 10 <laughs> boxes and so therefore we agreed. It's like, it was there a buzz? Did you have a giggle? <laughs> Yeah, so it, it overcomes that, that um, and I think that was another, yeah, so another guy that, because uh, I was kind of asking for feedback about it when I was actually turning this into a thing, and he said that you're able to really get to know someone and get to those big questions without it being unromantic. It still feels good. Yeah, yeah. Right, so it's, um, so the whole thing together is what is the love go method. So it's mm. not just the Lego kit. This is yeah, kind of yeah. like the tool. It's not just but there's this, mucking around. <laughs> there's this whole process. But it's almost like powered by play and the Lego to make yeah. it really fun and make it this. Because it, I would say it was really more about me. It wasn't the guys I had to change. It was me. 
And this yeah. allowed me to do this in a way that was like really fun and good. Yeah. And helped me to ask yourself questions. Yeah. To answer that and in front of. Yeah, and go. Well, actually, this is what I want in a relationship because. Yeah. The guy I'm seeing now, I don't think I would have dated him before. I would have been like, oh, he's not for me. I'm not attracted to him. Yeah. So part of it is just like, well, why is it? Why am I doing that? What's going on for me? And there's this whole ancestral stuff there and other things that, mm. that you know, I discovered from, from doing this and other, other things I was doing to work on myself. So how did you go from putting out some Lego bricks on a few yeah. dates? To actually turning this into what we're talking about now. So that's a really good question because I had people asking me to turn it into a thing. Like this is an and You were telling idea. friends and they were Yeah, like, they were like, Well, I want this. I wanna yeah. I wanna have this. And the guy who, who did my Lego serious play certi- he did my certification, so he's like this kind of master Lego trainer. And I told him about it. Okay. And his he kind of runs one of the big communities for people who are Lego serious play facilitators. Yeah. And I told him about it and he was like, I've never heard of anybody doing this. Because he kind of knows who's doing what. Because yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. idea with Lego Serious Play is it's it's an open source method. So you can take what you want and do. So you kind of have this blessing to innovate mm. with it. So he was like, that is amazing. And was encouraging me to, to take it and run with it. But I have this um, uh, habit of getting distracted by the next shiny object. And um, I said, no, I need to focus on my corporate work. I need to stick to doing this. It's too much of a distraction. And then, of course, COVID happened. Yeah. So that's when I said, well, maybe because my, my work involved going on airplanes and doing lots of hands-on workshops. And so yeah. it became this opportunity for me to say, well, maybe this is actually what I should be doing. And so yeah. it's in addition to I'm still doing the other playfulness and curiosity, but I can't do keynotes. I can't do a big part of what I, well you can but it's all virtual on a screen and that yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. isn't what I want it's I'm yeah. really about the human connection indeed yeah so so um so I said okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna investigate I'm gonna talk to maybe I think it was a few dozen women um around the world I ended up talking to I just put it out there I said dating is broken do you want to talk to me about it on LinkedIn mm. and talk to all these women um kind of as young nice as like research. early 20s and late 40s I think was was yep because I assumed that a lot of the problems I was having because I was a bit older. So maybe the dating pool is just like that. Yeah. So I talked to all these women about being dating being broken and they all said that they were having the same problems as me. And so I was like, wow, this is mm. simultaneously heartening that it's not just me, but also just like really sad. Yeah, yeah. That it's happening for everybody. Um, so that was when I, after I had those conversations with people mm. around the world, I, I decided, okay, this is actually a thing and it's a problem that needs to be solved. Um, the other thing, too, is that women were saying that they didn't have anybody else to talk to, like, especially if you're a bit older. Hmm. They were kind of like the the odd woman out in their group, and so they didn't have a community of women to talk to yeah. about their dating situation. So this, I, I see this as very much um, a movement that I want to start hmm. of women supporting each other. Yeah. Um, to just change the narrative around dating for women because it's, it's, yeah, I think there's a lot of, it's hard to be single, but especially hard to be a single woman. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So after your speaking to people around the world, yep. then what? So then I started um, creating some prototypes and testing it with people and getting feedback. So um, I have a few different people that I've been working with um, in around Australia and mm-hmm. in the U.S., um, and get, getting them to take it on dates and tell me what happens or coaching them in different aspects of it. So kind of doing using my background in game design to take yeah. stuff and then put it out there and test different parts of it um, and getting feedback. And so um, it's, it's very similar to what I used. Um, the difference now is that there is a beautiful bag that's actually designed here and created in, in WA in Western Australia yep. that is designed so that you can take it on a date there's cards that come with it. And then there's mm-hmm. a whole kind of, I've kind of written up the whole method and yeah. the system that's used because it's not just about this. It's also about um, how do you filter or how do you, how do you strategically <coughs> use dating apps so that you don't waste all your time talking uh, and spending time with this, not the nonsense that happens there. Yes. So how do you, um, how do you do that? So there's this whole system that is playful and fun that's around yeah. making it so that dating it's fixing dating for women, so mm. it's not 
it's it's more time efficient it's not kind of distracting you know that kind of spending hours and hours yeah and like hours. social media is designed to right how do you how do you make sure that it's not yeah yeah sucking up all Overly of your time and making you life. just feel sad and right yeah mm. and also that self-work as well yeah yeah and then is the is the idea that when you if you were to take this out and yeah. you start playing with the partner with this and you, you know you're pulling cards and yeah. then and, and and you know we, we've got a pack here so we're talking about oh, things like let, let's just pull one straight out, out here build what your high school was like yeah or build what you feel most grateful for yeah oh, that's cool yeah or build what your perfect day looks like for yeah. you and in here we've got you know a variety of things <laughs> ranging from the shark yeah. To, how did you choose this stuff? Is it just the stuff? So this is this is a custom one that's actually a gift for a friend that I'm going to send out. So it's basically um, ladders. There's like a base. It's it uses there's a, a Lego serious play kit that you can get from Lego. Mm. Um, but I've adapted that to put in more things that are about. Um, so sh she said that she's really into like nature. So there's more nature pieces and hobbies and um, got surfboard and yeah and like a that. bike and. But the thing is, is that it's it's also the pieces that are in these kits are very metaphorical. Yeah. So like there's a shark, but that can be used to represent all sorts of different things like danger or adventure or fear. Yeah. So there's the scaffolding this, pieces. With this is a tree. very popular one, which is. Um, uh, a, a, like a kind of bush, I guess you want to describe it, or a plant, but people will put it on the head of a, a Lego figure to say, oh, my mind has been blown or something <laughs> like that. So there's yes. the whole point of it is that you can use them literally or you can use them metaphorically and yes. they stand in for many different things. And I've seen people experimenting with, with kits where they have just like very basic ones where they'll say this represents, the green mm. brick represents nature, the brown brick net represents, I don't know, malaise, and it's just what does ah, it yeah, mean the to color you? as an aspect to it. Yeah, as well. so it's like it's 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 so um, just I guess fertile for for all sorts of amazing things to happen. And the idea is that you, when you're doing this, it's getting you out of your head when you're building. Um, you're you're thinking with your hands, so yeah. you bypasses that like overthinking, and so you're not well, meant becomes, to think about what you're building. You just start doing it. It becomes a kinesthetic experience, yeah, and not necessarily a mental experience. Yeah. So when when um, a lady is taking the kit out, mm. and, and and you know you're playing during the course of the evening, is it a case of you, you then as part of this? You know, are, are there checks and things, or is it generally this elicits a feeling of whether, yeah, there's a connection there or not? So is yeah. it still that sort of deeper unconscious level stuff, or or does this lead to very clear conscious decisions? Do you get what I mean? Like yeah. an analytical framework. Yeah, and I think that's it's that's a really good question because it sits in part of that larger methodology. So the idea is that, so with these cards here, for example, these are all based on um, a research paper that was developed by a psychologist. They're questions that are actually um, shown to, to how they describe it as generating inter interpersonal closeness, which is like, a, you know, just to describe a way yeah. to connect people. So these are all based on that. But the idea is that um, before you go on the date, there's all of that work that you do by yourself. And you decide what cards do I want in here? What are what's important to me? What's not important? Right. So you and, filter those out. Yeah, and then you can also add in ah. cards if you want. And so it's designed that you 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 kind of sit with yourself and th get clear on what it is um, that you want to know and what do you mm. want to attract. But I would say it's more really because part of the method is also really coming back to the feminine, which is to really get back into your feeling. Mm -hmm. And so it's more about the feeling that I think is generated. Right. So, I mean, obviously there's questions where I've, you know, I've had an experience where a, a guy used this to tell me how he felt about kids, for example. So mm. there are practical things like, did he want to have kids or not? I didn't ask that, which I thought was amazing that he wanted to share that. Yes. And it, didn't, it didn't feel weird. Um, so there's like obviously practical things, but I think it is really more about, do I feel this connection with someone? Mm -hmm. um, does it feel like a romantic connection? Does it feel like a you know, more of a friendship connection and mm. getting that, you know, knowing more, knowing more about it. Get more sensitive to that. Yeah, because I think if you're going back into the that, oh, does he tick all the boxes? It kind of isn't what this is about. No. It's very much to get you into that feeling space. Yes. And not thinking, overthinking and not, because it's about, yeah, the the playful non-attachment. So I'm, yes. I'm engaged, I'm present, I'm playful, I'm curious, but I'm not um, attached to the outcome other than I just 
want to have a human connection in some way and yeah and learn more about myself and the other person and maybe that turns into something and maybe it doesn't um Obviously, this has been focused at badass women. <laughs> yeah. And it's been women and the feminine in the center. Yeah. Is this, is this open to sale for men? Well, that's it. Yeah. So <laughs> when I first initially started doing this, I thought, okay, I'll have this we, for men and women. Women don't have the struggling with the feeling <laughs> like monopoly. Yeah. So I thought about it. But the more that I was doing the initial research, I realized that I, it's very much based on my, um, what I understand. And yeah. so it's created to work for people who are like me. So it's kind of like professional women mm. who maybe have grown up with um, with moms who have been very, um, you know, 80s power women like my mom, you know, told they have to be like men. And so you have this idea of, you know, you're successful in your business life and you apply that to your dating life and why isn't that working? And, you know, get, you know making things happen. I'm the goal woman. Yeah. Um, and so I realized from doing this that... I don't under like and talking to men about their dating experience, they have a whole other set of problems, but it's completely different. Right. So for now, I'm focusing on professional, uh, straight professional women. Yeah. That's what I understand. And down the road, it might open up to that. To yeah. Other to men, if I um if I have someone who wants to come and <laughs> who's yeah, had yeah, that yeah. experience. No, it's a question, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Because I, I think it's really <clears throat> important to really like i i don't want to create something that i don't fully understand because i haven't had well, that yeah experience. because then you get into the world of generalizations and yeah. this that and the other um whereas sticking to what you know yeah it's the best way that i can bring um to serve those people mm. is to really focus on i really understand this i really know how if it to doesn't resonate them. for somebody then that's probably because they're outside what yeah exactly you know. it's for a very and yeah. that's okay too yeah it's not for everybody yeah <laughs> and that's kind of the thing is if it was for everybody it wouldn't work as well it's it's for a particular kind of woman, um, I probably will open it beyond professional women down the road. But the reason why is for now is that um, I'm about to launch like uh, what I would describe as founding memberships. So um, women who want to be part of this at the beginning who would get exclusive access to work with me. Yeah. Um, and, and then as that, um, as it becomes more of a movement and more people want to engage, that's when I obviously can't scale myself up. Yes. So I'm focusing on what that and doing that really well now and then growing that and then probably having other ways to engage in it and be more more general. Still for a specific, I think that, you know, growth oriented yes. mindset of people who want to invest in themselves. But that's what I understand and that's who I am and that's how I feel like we can bring about change. That's a fair answer, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's a fair answer. What I love about it. And just to be transparent, because I was one of your guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> you came over um, and uh, I and Lucy had a great night um, building stuff. Yeah. It was, it was a really good giggle. And we both went to bed that night remarking on what a laugh it was and, yeah. and how we got to learn a few new bits and bobs and, and, and things like that. And one of the things I quite liked, you know, because I'm always one for pressing buttons to find people. Yeah. Uh, or to connect to people. Um, not everybody appreciates it, but <laughs> we get that. Um, but this this was like a nice, playful way to go close to people's buttons, which yeah. you're trying to find, um, and, and find out what is acceptable and what is yeah. not, and how far you can go. I think, you know, it's, it, it, it comes back to that. Um, it, com it also comes back to that, you know, that some of the really cool stuff that... Um, really cool simple stuff in that just by having this metaphorical physical kinesthetic interaction it's another modality to unlock things out mm. of yourself and others mm. and create a shared understanding mm. um which you know not disrespecting what you're doing is, is the underlying dynamics of what yeah. you're doing you know it's like sometimes when you get um you know kids that struggle to um concentrate in school instead of putting them on a chair, they put them on a Swiss ball yeah. and, and all of a sudden they can concentrate because yeah. they're engaged in their core and they've yeah. got that physical activity. And, and in a world where we, we are a lot more sedentary, this, this is kind of cool to build stuff and mm. usually use your hands. But it's fascinating because you know, at, at its core, we do want um, human connection. Mm. It is a requirement. And we have these more synthetic connections and yet this is helping to go back mm. to more authentic connections.
and look, you know, there's a boy part of me that's like, it's bloody Lego, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think that's why it's good for women to bring on dates. Because well, guys that's are the like, other really who's this cool woman who's bringing well, Lego on you the know, date? You know, it's like, whoa, I mean, <laughs> most guys, well, I'm sweepingly generalizing here, but most guys would have had some sort of interaction with building bro- block yeah. type activity, whether it's Lego or something else. Yeah. Uh, it was Lego. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, all, all I can say is from a feedback point of view for, you know, if women are trying to attract anyone with a background like me, yeah. then if they turn up with a pack of Lego and it's like, let's play and get to know each other, like, freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you're taking me back to my childhood state. And Which in and of itself is kind of cool as well, because yeah. like, that's before all this crap and yeah, drama all that of we the picked no- up. Yeah, all of the nonsense. Mm. <laughs> and that's actually really interesting too, because... Um, you're taking men back to quite an innocent place. Yeah, well, I think well, I used to play with Lego. I mean, I still okay, play yeah. with Lego now, but that yeah, was obviously. kind of why I uh, got into this is that I, um, I love Lego. And I was like, can I turn this into a business thing? So it, yeah. was, it was just, you know, can I have my, my passion? But I think a lot of women play with Lego too. But anyway, um, I think what you say about the, the um, childhood stuff is there's a researcher called uh, Dr. Gordon Neufeld, who is an early childhood psychologist. Mm. Um, and he's done a ton of work around um, trauma and playfulness and um, really, really amazing guy and actually was able to, had the, the, the huge honor of being able to interview him um, about playfulness because he talks about a lot, a lot about how mm. the importance of play and as, a, as a way for us to feel and be in touch with our emotions and how as adults we don't really do it anymore and how he does it with his wife as a way of reconnecting. Um, but so like a lot of that research actually underpins this. Yes. But what I found really interesting is that I, um, some, some people don't want to play. And that's mm. what for me was a red flag. If you don't, if, I, if there's an invitation well, yeah. to play and they're like weirded out, it's like, okay, you're not, not, you're not for me. Like you should yeah, yeah, be yeah. with me. But there's also a lot yeah. of research. Um, don't, don't even order that drink. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. this yeah. is done. Yeah. Fair play. Uh, but there's a lot of actually research that looks at pl- play histories, for example, where mm. it's, if you were if you were deprived um, to, from from being playful as a kid, there's actually a lot of links between that and being growing up and, and being a criminal. Um, and so there's and and um, Neufeld talks about this as well about how um, he was looking at I think it was like some of, so he's a Canadian who was talking about Canadian um, psychopaths and serial killers, and um, that they just couldn't feel their feelings and they weren't allowed to play. Mm. And so. Um, there's probably like there's pro- if, if you're meeting guys and they're not wanting to play, there's probably a lot of work that they need to do. Um, mm. You know, maybe they're not just not just for you, but maybe that's a sign. They're not that for anyone. Well, right yeah, now. And, right now, yeah. So right it's now. yeah, and so I think that's another thing because women have to be really concerned about safety issues and stuff. And mm. um, so if yeah, if a guy's weirded out by playing, that's probably a good sign that that's not a good situation, a good a good relationship for you. Hmm. Hmm. And also, I guess, I guess, when you talk about safety stuff, mm. is that um, one has to be careful mm. in that. <clears throat> generally, we go. Generally, we're we're cruising around in the world, interacting with people at a very um, conscious level. I'm not mm. saying as in thinking it through, as in just conscious level. Yeah. But what we're doing here, once we dive into um, the world of meta- metaphor, mythical thinking, things like that, is we are we are tapping further and further deeper yeah. into the unconscious of a psyche. Like yeah. Jung would have a field day with this, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. And interestingly, having uh, done podcasts with dream therapists as well of a Jungian orientation, they'd have a field day with this as well. Mm. Um, field day in terms of you know, okay, so explain that, build that, this, that, and the other, and 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 that's a lot of you know, what goes on in there. So I suppose at the other end of the scale, you know, if, if all of a sudden, you know, you or the person opposite is reaching for all the black bricks, <laughs> right? Yeah. And we're talking about my childhood and it's all the black bricks and it's like, oh, yeah. something was going on in the childhood. Yes. <laughs> there we yeah. go. We're into a thing. Yeah. Um, there is that as well. Yeah. But... If you're going to get into a partnership with somebody, yeah. then again, at least you have um, a greater understanding of the um, significance of the black bricks earlier yeah. on. Yeah, I think that there's, and, and this is actually the, the cards were um, 
uh, suggestion of Michael Fern, who was my Lego Serious Play certification guy. But the idea with the cards is that um, by so the, the way it's designed is when you go on a date, you give them to the date. So you give them to the man, and yeah. he decides what he wants to do. Hmm. So it's very, if he doesn't want to answer a question, yeah. he doesn't have to. Cool. So it's very much designed. So the woman picks what she wants to answer and then gives a selection. So yeah. it's very kind of so conscious. She shortlisted it before. Huh? Yeah. So like what's, based, yeah. On, based on the work that she's done, what's important to me? What do I yeah. want to know? I what what am I kind of filtering and you for? you pick three. Yeah. And so they pick, and then that way there's no... Because so, this isn't meant to be around, you know, like hmm. tricking or anything. No, no, no. It's meant to be a very positive, safe Not a experience. Rolf, Rolf child blood test. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so that way, there's that consent yeah. built into it. Like everybody is consenting yeah. to what they they it's do. A bit of safety around it. Yeah, because I think that's really important. But I guess, yeah, I guess the the point is, is that recognize that. Um, tools like this means that you're going to get to a place of depth a lot yeah. quicker yeah. than you normally would yeah. do. Now, you know, some people might be... And that's why this isn't for everybody. Or Yeah, <laughs> some people might be all down with that. Yeah. And, 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 and that's really great and happy to do that. Others, maybe less so. Yeah. But again, if you're looking for a deeper connection with somebody, exactly. let's dial back into it. If you're yeah. looking for a deeper connection with somebody whether it's murky in there or not, whether they're pulling the sharks out and the black bricks. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, because I think that's important to say too, is this is specifically, it's not if you're just like looking for random hookups. Um, it's no, no, If you're no. looking for like, I want a quality relationship with a conscious yeah, person, yeah. I want a conscious relationship with a high quality man. Mind you, if he's building massive dicks <laughs> out of it. Yeah, then you know that it's probably, <laughs> it's probably about something else, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, well, Who knows? No. Yeah. You'd have to wait for them to explain yeah. it. Um, but yeah, but I guess, yeah, it's, it's actually the more, the more I think about it, the more I talk through it, there's this lovely thing whereby if you are up for that level of depth and you're actually serious about yeah. a relationship, which, which does mean you're going to have to go into the depths of each of the souls yeah. because that's where we go. It's yeah. not like I'm just going to get in this much and then, yeah. you know, stick a, a safety platform in because I don't want to go any further. Yeah. Yeah, you because know, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Then, um, and if you are up for it then that's all cool too. Yeah. So yeah, I see the... And that might be why someone might say, no, I, I don't want to do that because maybe they don't consciously know, mm -hmm. but they intuitively feel very confronted. Or maybe through working with you, a lady goes, I love this, but I'm not quite ready for yeah. it. Yeah, and that happens too. So yeah, yeah, so you're flushing people out quite quickly. Yeah. Because hell knows there's a whole lot of people out there who are just freaking lonely because they don't like being with themselves. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I think you yeah. want to avoid. And I think... If you did go on a date with them, my hope would be that this would help to kickstart something for them because I I really mm. think the idea with this so someone is, comes out like you said earlier on yeah. someone comes out of it goes, to a better place. Yeah, I'm actually um, not ready to date or I actually so the the guy who who shared his feedback with me is he he learned something about himself mm. where he was at and actually realized he was wanting to do something else in in relationships mm. and it was actually there's something else that he wanted to focus on. So that would be my hope is that, that none of this is you know it's very positive and very. The, the bigger thing for me is that this is really about healing the masculine and the feminine divide. Right. Um, and I That's think, a big statement. Yeah. So what does that mean? Well, so, yeah, I think that the kind of where we're at with apps is almost like a microcosm of where I think we're at with the male and the female, almost on like a symbolic energetic level, but also just like men and women. Because mm. um, there's just tons of stuff, if, like, you know, having a background working in tech and innovation, there's a lot of like toxicity um, towards women, and it's almost like we've gone backwards for the, the project of feminism mm. in some ways, where there's just like this lack of understanding mm. and a lot of anger on both sides that I don't think is serving anybody. Mm. Um, I think I, I can understand, and I think it's it's like justified, but it's at the same time not necessarily there's a difference between like being right and winning and sometimes it's justified, but like it's not actually gonna move things forward. Yeah. So it's that, but it's also just, I think part of the, the when I started to really dig into what was going on for me and why I was attracting toxic relationships is I realized that there's like this ancestral family thing where there's like this trend in my family where um, there's toxic, like the, the women, not all of them. My, my parents are still very happily married, but it seems there is a, like a number of data points in my family where there have been situations where 
there is that like I've played out the same pattern mm. and so it and it's healing the the, the masculine feminine in me and mm. so when I was doing this work and doing that work on myself it was like having this realization that that's what that was really about was a huge thing it's like oh actually I've done the work internally I'm still working I mean it's there's yeah, yeah. always work to do We're a work in progress. but it's like oh I've done enough of the work that I'm not creating attracting these toxic situations I'm not going to go back out into the world and bleed all over it like <laughs> I have done previously carrying yeah. the wounds and dramas of yeah exactly my past. and why do I keep it and I think that was the important thing and it was working with Sahaja who has been on your podcast going in and, and it's like well why do you keep why do you keep attracting those kind of guys and it was about me hmm. doing that work and so um, what's the story that they're getting the hook into yeah exactly and so it's almost like I had to do that work to heal that ancestral stuff and heal those mm. patterns and now it's like okay I want to bring this into the world because there's a for whatever reason that's a, from my research as well there's a lot of women who have ha or in this situation and it plays out and it it, it, it really creates a disconnect in relationships mm. between men and women and just creates um, stress and anxiety and anger and I can say now that I actually feel a lot happier and I feel a more energized. So there's all of these other things that come from it. Hmm. Um, a lot of it was trying to be perfect and control everything and control outcomes. And so more of the being in the feminine and surrendering, we can, we initially, I think we can go, well, that's anti-feminist and that's giving away your power, but it's actually a different kind of being in your power as a woman. And hmm. I find it consciously giving it away as opposed to unconsciously. Well, you're not giving it away. It's a different kind of power. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's not that I'm not that I'm like not in my power. It's more mm. that I, my power is allowing and creating space for things to, for me to be taken care of. Um, not trying to control outcomes all the time. So it's almost like embracing the chaos, mm. embracing. So it's, it's not that I'm not making things happen. It's just that I'm conscious around when am I going to use my, I would like, this is kind of using more of the energetic description, but like my masculine, being in my masculine when I want to get stuff done in my business, but then I want, I don't want to bring that to my relationship because then it's just, it just creates conflict. And so it's not that I'm not getting what I want and I'm not, it's yeah. not that I'm, but I, it's, I'm communicating in a mm. more peaceful way. It's putting your putting Kate into all the different facets of Kate into the most appropriate part. Yeah, so it's communicating in a better way. Mm. So it, yeah, it's, and I think when I first came to this, I was like, well, this is anti-feminist because this isn't empowering me. But the more I did the work and the more that, and this is kind of built into this as well, is it's mm. more about, yeah, allowing women to come back into their power in a different way than that, like, 80s power woman of like grasping and making things happen if I want a man if I want a good relationship I want to make the man do what I want and control him which isn't good for anybody no and that's like the, coming into it from a business perspective right it's like I'm going to focus on the outcome I'm going to have and so yeah it's it's really I think I feel a lot happier and more energized in my life mm. I think when we spend time understanding the storms of different energy and stories and narratives that mm. play out among us, within us, not among us, within us. <clears throat> and then they start to become more calm and then we've become, we, we can become more boundaried and, and realize what we're going to accept and what we're not going to accept, et cetera, et cetera. Then, then once that starts to come into place, I found it doesn't really matter what the rest of the world's up to. Mm. It really doesn't. Because I sometimes get, I sometimes scratch my head when we get to um, identity politics and, and, you know, sexual divides and this, that and the other. And, you know, it's very easy to say, well, yeah, you banter that bring because you're a white, middle class, white bloke. Mm. Also, potentially one of the most discriminated people, <laughs> but we don't talk about that, do we? <laughs> you know, the backbone of any economy. Um, but, um, but beyond that, you know, I've had my dramas, I've had, I've had my storms within, I've had the things that were so important I had to do them and then after a while the storm blows itself out. I've done, you know, I am continually work in progress. But nowadays I have a lot more stillness mm. and then boundaries turn up and it really doesn't bother me what everybody's up to. Mm. So I used to get triggered by a lot of the stuff and then it's like, oh, I'm just leaving to it. Yeah, I think that that's the important idea of with, with the triggering thing is that it's almost like we've we outsource responsibility of our emotions to other people 
Oh, yes. So if I get triggered, it's my responsibility to figure out why I'm getting triggered rather than trying to get other people to stop doing the thing that's triggering me. And like, yeah. I'm not saying it's okay for, you know, to be racist or sexist, but so I think it's that difference between being, uh, being the, a... Um, well, you're into a really interesting <laughs> area now, aren't you? Because um, even admitting that you are triggered about certain things yeah. um, can be considered offensive or say, oh, God, my God, do you think like that? Yeah. So, well, y yes, I do. Yeah. Currently, yeah. let me explore that to find out whether it's l legitimate or not. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, tr triggering is a really interesting one. I mean, only last week I was talking to Joseph about we were talking about death, mm. and for somebody who's dying, it's difficult to talk about death when you know other people's unresolved relationship with death gets triggered by the fact that you're talking about your own demise. Which is why my real legacy service works really mm. well at times because you can just talk to me and you know i'm not vested in someone's life so we'll just talk and explore and and you know when we see other people in pain and discomfort that triggers dis yeah. pain and discomfort yeah. in ourselves and so then we want to go fix them because we want to fix ourselves and so you know this brings me back to another one of Bryn's pet focus areas which is you know looking after your own nervous system mm. and if you're more Part of that being comfortable in yourself is also being comfortable in your nervous system and mm. understanding when it's fired up and when it's mm. not. And the more you can remain open, the more you can get the most out of these things yeah. and, and meet great people. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that it's it's a, a going back to that triggering thing. It's a, it's about do you want to win or do you want to be right? Because yeah, I can be right that you know there's yeah. a lot of it's there's a lot of nonsense that women have to deal with in the world, hmm. um, and that's not okay that that's like that. But I could be angry about it and, yes. and let that control me or I can go and, be an SJW and make, about it. <laughs> go and make change in the world, right? So uh, yeah, I'm I'm not and I I'm still navigating how I feel about because I, I know I have I used to be an like an anti globalization activist in in, yeah. in my twenties and um it's navigating yes there is a lot there is inequality and problems in the world, but mm. how do we go about changing that? And it is mm. that that challenge of being right versus winning, and I have I have a, a good friend who kind of mentored me in in um, in making change for women in tech. And a lot of times, I would just get mad when when I would face discrimination or just nonsense. Mm. And she would almost like help me to step back and see it as an educational opportunity to try to to instead of mm. getting angry to make change. But then it does get into like that emotional labor thing of like I'm almost at the point now where I don't want I just want to do my thing and not have to have emotional labor around being a woman hmm. working in innovation or a woman working in tech and yeah. being asked to do all these things that are unpaid and exhausting to do yes so it's I'm not sure what the answer is about any of this no. this is a whole other podcast but dangerous I, I, one, yes. but I think that it's for me it's like I can only control my own reaction to things and it's like mm. this radical responsibility and I had um, a lovely other friend of mine did a tarot reading for me or just do a tarot card at the beginning of the year. And um, it, it was the hermit. And he was like, for, for this year, the big thing for me is if you want peace, be peace. If you want love, be love. Mm. And so I think that that's, I don't know what the answer is, but I know that at least I can control how I react and control, control if I'm getting triggered. And, and if I'm coming from a place of peace and resourcefulness, then I can make yeah, a change in the world for all of the, the the nonsense and inequality. But yeah, that's all other podcasts. Indeed. <laughs> so you talked about a launch. Yeah. Actually, I think I want to say one more thing before we talk about Go that, on then. which is that um, in in kind of the the beta testing for this, I think this is a really powerful story. Is that mm. um, I have I had a client in the states who was using this, and so she's a Democrat. And she ended up, through using this, was dating a Trump supporter that she wow. wouldn't have otherwise. And they, they didn't work out, but for me, the fact that they were able to go on a bunch of dates, they yeah. didn't break up because of that. But they the fact through that... through the bullshit. They, yeah, they were able to connect to each other as human beings. And that is, I think, to me, when that happened, I was like, okay, this is, like, this is what this is really about. Like, yeah. Yes, it's about helping women to, to have amazing partners, but it's really at the look, the grand scale. It's like if you can get a Trump supporter and a, a Democrat talking to each other and connecting. Not alone like going level, on dates. <laughs> yeah. Then like that's, 
that's like I think that says it to me because well now now we're back to <laughs> like now we are back to yeah being relatively calm human beings yeah. where you know you I respect you to have your rights but there's still a common thing there that yeah. brings us together because I feel like it's the opposite of the, alg the algorithms have created these silos mm. where we're like that person. You see, this is the interesting thing because <clears throat> on one level, so this is an interesting thing. Mm. On one level, this demonstrates that if we overthink dating, we're rubbish at it. Mm. Therefore, you can argue whether the next thing is, is therefore, um, you could argue that consciously, yeah, we're not very good at it. Mm. Therefore, we need help. So the algorithm could play a role. If it was tweaked differently, maybe. But it's tweaked yeah. to keep us separate right now, the algorithm. Well, yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. And, yeah, most algorithms are keep us separate, polarized. Yeah. Because that makes more money. And continually <laughs> yeah. pressing the outrage button. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. But, yes, um, I could see how an algorithm would help. Yeah. Given... Maybe down the road, but I think for me, someone asked me, well, where's the app for this? And the point of it is that there is no app. Yeah, right? dude, because this is the app. Because, because we don't want, to, the thing is we spend all of our times in front yeah. of screens. And so, exactly. what we're going to do is start playing Tetris with each other. <laughs> it, the point, the point, the, the, you know, the, the thing is that it doesn't have an app. And even when you're doing the work with yourself at home, you're, you're, there's, there's mm. no app. It's you journaling, it's you doing, playing with the Lego with yourself. And it's coming back to that playfulness and, Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's all of the things. It's like the antidote to our modern world. So. Indeed. Yeah. So I said the launch. The launch, the launch. yeah. So um, I am launching this at, for foundation members. So people who want to be part of this, it's an initial four month program that you can join. Yeah. And so this is this exclusive kind of offering at the beginning because as this as the movement grows, it, it, it'll be harder to have access to me. So it's this opportunity yeah. for women who want to get in now and be part of this movement and have invested in themselves and have this, this um, mm. huge insight into themselves and go through the same process I've taken myself through because it's, it's that same thing where it's, yes. you're getting so much more out of it than, Just than finding love because I think finding love is really about you. Yes. Yeah. And so, <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is. So that's, that is launching. Um, and... I um, normally there's an application process in it because I really w want to work with people who are serious about changing and bringing change into the world. Um, but f because I am a fan of, of WA Real and listen to WA Real, and I think your listeners get this, it's, which is why they listen to it. Yeah. Um, anybody who listens to this and is interested in, in working with me in this in this foundation, becoming a foundation member, within 90 days, I'm going to say, of listening yep. to the podcast. Yeah. Um, can email me and I will uh, do a, a complimentary love readiness assessment. And um, so, yeah, so it's for people who are, who are WA Real listeners. Excellent. And so That's a fantastic um, go to my website um, or email, email me is probably the better way to do that. So it's Kate yeah. at lovegomethod.com. You can put that in the, the I'll notes put it or in something. The notes. Yeah. So send me an email. And if you're listening to this in the next 90 days, Excellent. we can make some magic. So the last question I ask all my yeah. guests is um, if you could upload one question into the collective consciousness so everybody spends five or ten minutes just thinking about it. The answer to it? Yeah. What would it be? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a great question. You just said you're a regular listener. <laughs> you should have known this was coming. <laughs> hmm. And I have thought about this every time you do ask this. <laughs> <laughs> now you're here. Yeah, anyway, I'll shut up. Almost like a meta question of like, what is Ooh. the most important question to you? Oh, I like that. What or, is, is, or what is the one thing you want to know? Hmm. Because I had, I was on a, a call, so I'm in this amazing coaching program um, for kind of go go giver entrepreneurs instead of go getter entrepreneurs. Badass go getters. Yeah, badass go getters. And um, one of the 
kind of activities on the call was was asking people um, what is one thing you can rely on in 2021 and the point of it was I think when everybody answered everybody gave a really different answer like mm -hmm. some people were like change some people were, were like myself my intuition mm -hmm. um, and then it was like what is the one thing that you can do to make sure that you're connecting to that but the answers that people gave were so different and the point was is to show how everybody's in a different reality mm. and a different situation mm. and i thought that was such an important they're all true but they're all completely different so some mm. people were like i need to focus on my sales and other people were like i need to meditate more i need to go for a walk or there is no problem yeah. everything's fine and it's just like that i think it's so fascinating and mm. i guess it's kind of coming back to the, the lego it's like the answers that people the things that people build that come out of this is just so every time I do it, and no matter yeah. what setting, in a, a, a client meeting, um, just for mm. fun, for on a date, whatever, it's just how people build with the Lego. Sometimes people do it like quote unquote upside down, where they have the studs on the bottom, like, yeah. it, and it's just it's almost it just like is, yeah. that that and asking that question <clears throat> and see that diversity of mm. of realities. Yeah, yeah, and 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 <laughs> again, that's a whole nother other podcast where. Yeah. You know the modalities you choose and you know people always tell you, you need to do it like this this and this and technically you don't you know mm. you work it out for yourself mm. okay it's been awesome chatting yeah, my pleasure this is really fun thanks Bryn. yeah no it's been awesome <laughs> chatting i um i sincerely wish you all the best with this Thank because you. um well it 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 taps into all the things that this podcast is about yeah <laughs> <laughs> real life connecting with people yeah Exactly. So anything that promotes that, as far as I'm concerned, is fucking awesome. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>